everyone. I'm excited to start showing you some of our fermented foods that we make. With winter just around the corner, fermented food is one of the best things to have and to eat, especially for the reason that it helps your gut flora. And once you have a healthy gut, you have a healthy body. So I started making some red, some red sauerkraut and what I did was I filled up this bowl with sliced uh, cabbage. I'm using the red one for this one because I already had it. And I just shredded some, uh, one, two carrots, a yellow one and an orange one because I had some colored carrots. But if I only had orange carrots, I would only be using orange. Uh, I did sprinkle one and a half tablespoon of salt on top of this. You don't want to over sprinkle salt because it will get salty. The carrot will add a nice sweetness to it and basically what I'm doing now is I'm just pushing it down and I'm squeezing the water out of this sauerkraut and it's something fun to do something you could even have your kids do if you're in a pinch and you've got other things you got to do around the house you get those little kids to come and just squeeze the water out of the cabbage and not only are they having fun doing it they're gonna learn how to do it and it gives you a chance to do something else so like I said all this is is salt two carrots and some cabbage and if you're using less cabbage than I have then use less salt instead of using a one and a half tablespoon uh, use one to even less depending how much cabbage you have and very very easy to make so I'm just gonna go get some mustard seeds because I want to add some of that to my sauerkraut so I'll be right back now if you want you could add herbs to this but I want to keep it as simple as possible uh, I'm gonna add some beautiful yellow mustard seeds perfect and I'm just gonna keep squeezing the water out of this not out of it because we're going to use that water to fill up our jars but it's really really easy to do now I've been asked to show my kimchi I have so many different kimchi recipes um, I'm gonna ma be making one soon because my daughter can't get enough kimchi and I didn't have any made so we end up buying some which is almost impossible sometimes because it's hard to find vegan kimchi because usually the kimchi you get at the store has fish sauce sometimes they have uh, bits of fish or uh, some shrimp in it so very hard to find it but we did manage to find one and she looked at me and she goes ma can you make some kimchi so I'll be showing you another recipe of mine I do have a few up but I'm gonna start fermenting a lot of stuff and I'm gonna show you how I do it and these are great to have in the refrigerator or if you have a cool basement somewhere where you can keep it uh, because once you put this in once you fermented it on the counter they will continue to ferment so by putting it in the refrigerator you pretty much slow down the process of fermenting so I'm just gonna let this sit for now. I'm gonna pull some jars, but I'm excited to show you some of the stuff that I'm gonna jar for you. And I'm also gonna be doing, or maybe my daughter is gonna do it for me. Uh, we're gonna do the master tonic, something that we love to have, especially during the winter. And I don't just do the, uh, I don't just use the tonic. I also save all the pulp of the stuff that I made the tonic, and those go great on so many recipes so I'm excited to show you this is a very small video just to tell you that I'll be doing a whole bunch of fermented foods for you and some fun little surprises also so hang around and you'll see what I have what I have up my sleeve here we go back to squeezing it This was completely full when I started. It was like overlapping the cabbage. And like I said, I only used one and a half tablespoons of salt. And 
these are some of the easiest things to make. Uh, you can't get more simple than this. Basically, it's salt and cabbage. You're just squeezing the water out of the cabbage and that brine. You're going to pour it into your jar along with your cabbage. And then you just let it sit for a couple of days, up to a week. Well, some people keep it for a long, long time because they really like that funky, funky um, aged sauerkraut. And some people leave it for less time. Now, look how little cabbage I have left. And like I said, this stuff is fantastic for your body. If you're making a nice little stir fry, you could put a little pile of this right over your rice. Um, if you're making a beautiful Buddha bowl, you could get a nice little bunch of this delicious sauerkraut and you could add it to your Buddha bowl along with some delicious tempeh, which is also fermented, guys. So I'm going to show you some great recipes and get those fermented foods in your body going to keep you healthy I promise funny but everything that we put in our mouth that goes through our system reflects what happens to our body um, if we get sick it's because we're not eating right and we're not taking care of our bodies if I tell people if you put water in your car is it going to move or do you need gas in there okay so this is pretty much squeezed out the more you squeeze the more you're gonna have a soft, tender sauerkraut. And that's about it. So I'm gonna go get me some jars and we're gonna put this away to ferment. Okay, we're going to push that over, bring my jar. These are my bean jars that I keep and I wash and I put away for whenever I need it. And they're so handy to have. Otherwise, just get yourself some mason jars and you can use those. Here we go. My hands washed and clean. I'm just going to pack my jar. How easy was that guys I don't think you could get anything easier than this a little more on this side you want to pack these in because it's going to make its own water Then we'll fill the rest up. There we go. A little more on this side. My hands are washed, guys. There we go. A little more. I'm making a mess. Now you could change this up. You could put ginger if you want. Um, you can use white cabbage instead of red and this is going to be like the never ending jar you're going to keep taking stuff from here and it's just it's like there's always uh, there we go there's always the sauerkraut in your jar because there's so much of it in here Two jars. That's about it. And now I'm going to add whatever water I have. This is still going to keep making water, but whatever I have of water, I'm going to add to my jar. There we go. And there's that one and that's how easy it is to make sauerkraut guys now what I do is 
Let me just take this away for now. I do close my jar and I leave it on my counter and every day I come here and I burp it. There's my jars. Aren't they beautiful? Now if you don't like the dark uh, sauerkraut, you could always uh, make the, the white sauerkraut. But either way, it's delicious. So here's my first fermenting jar. And I'm going to show you tomorrow how it is and what's happening to it. Like, I'm not going to keep it completely closed tight. I will put this in a plate because some of the liquids might just start coming up when it's fermenting. I will put a little bowl underneath. But it is that easy to make sauerkraut. Two minutes at home. And when you make your own, uh, it's a whole different ball game, guys. It's really, really good. And uh, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of things that I do ferment and how easy it is and how good this is for you. Uh, there's kombucha, that's a fermented drink. Uh, tempeh, that's a fermented uh, bean that you're eating. Cheese is fermented. If you're making raw cheese, that's fermented. Uh, it's just good for you guys. So, uh, hope you like this little video. It's just a small one. It's an introduction to what I'll be showing you. And guess what, guys? I'll see you in the next video. For more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to Connie's Rawsome Kitchen. Give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.